Thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. My name is Adam Hines and I'm part of the customer success team here at YCharts. Hosting our webinar today is my colleague Nate Chatney, a customer success manager on our team. During today's webinar, we'll discuss using YCharts and Excel to optimize portfolio management. We will then have a Q&A for Nate at the end of his demonstration. However, if you have questions throughout the webinar, you can submit them to us on the left-hand side of your screen. For any questions not answered by Nate during the demonstration or in the Q&A, your support contact will reach out to you soon with the information you're looking for. Please keep in mind that the content of this webinar is meant for educational purposes only and is not intended to be used as investment advice, nor is YCharts acting as an advising party regarding client funds in any way. Finally, as always, a recording of the webinar will be made available on the website and sent to all attendees. Now, I'm going to pass it over to Nate to get us started. Awesome. Thanks, Adam, for the introduction, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing some pretty common topics I see on the support side here at YCharts. Uh, we get questions all the time about, you know, is there a way to upload portfolio holdings to save time or, to, you know, build model portfolios? Um, how can I better integrate the tools within YCharts? What the heck is this Excel plugin and what does it do? Uh, these are all things we're going to be touching on today. Uh, so a brief overview of today's agenda, just really quickly. A um, couple things we're going to hit on. Number one, we're going to go over a very highly anticipated new feature. Uh, it's a holdings upload for model portfolios. Very excited to share that with you. So we'll get into that in a second here. Uh, the second thing we're going to hit on is some of our top uh, ad templates for our Excel add-in. These are an alternative way to do portfolio level analysis and uh, you know, add a, a degree of flexibility and robustness that you really won't find anywhere else on YCharts. Finally, I'm going to go over some common workflows I see you know, my advisor clients working with in YCharts and just some best practices that I found working with some of you all. And uh, we'll share those with you as well to help you find efficiencies in your day. Now, before we move on to the actual presentation, I do just want to mention really briefly all the features we're going to be discussing today are available in the professional tier of YCharts. If uh, this is something you'd like to try or something you don't necessarily have access to at this time, feel free to get in touch with me. I'm happy to set you up with a week-long trial. All right, without further ado, let's dive in. So to exemplify what we're going to be going over today, I have the holdings from a prospect. Let's call him Jason Smith. And Jason sent me uh, the full holdings in his current portfolio and you know I'd like to take a look at these and see what my firm can do for him. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into Y charts here. So the first thing we're gonna do is build Jason a model portfolio. We're gonna do this using the model portfolios feature. Uh, as you can see I've got one built out already. I have it open in another tab here. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the process for creating a new model portfolio. So in the model portfolio editor, you're gonna type in the name of the portfolio. So in this case, I'll just put in Jason Smith. A description, let's use current portfolio. And set whatever benchmark you think is appropriate. In this case, I use moderate aggressive. I'll use the uh, S&P target risk index. A little more balanced than just using the S&P 500. I'm gonna set our rebalance frequency at quarterly. That seems good. Series history, we'll leave that at newest. And series level, let's go ahead and leave that at 1,000. Now, we get to actually entering the securities. And previously on Y charts, this is where you would type in the name or the ticker of each fund available. And, you know, obviously that's cumbersome and time consuming, especially if you're doing this on a daily or even weekly or monthly or quarterly basis. However, it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of the most highly anticipated features in model portfolios. You've been asking for this for months, probably the better part of a year now. We're really excited to bring it to you, this lovely little upload data button here. So if I click this, you get directed to a pop-up where you download a template in which you can put your clients or prospects holdings. So I'm just gonna download this template real quick, show you what that looks like. Now the rules for data formatting are clearly stated here on the site. And as you can see from this Excel pop-up, we'll just let this load here. I'll blow that up. It's just two columns, symbols, 
weights. So you're just going to paste the symbols in here, paste the weights in here. Very easy. We're just going to close that down. And I'll go back to our current holdings that we have here. So we've already got this taken care of. This is done. And so let's just go back over to Y charts and upload these. So if I go to the folder here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and download these holdings. Or excuse me, upload these holdings into uh, Y charts. And I'll click the Submit button. And there they are. Now, those of you watching this are either clapping, crying out of pure happiness, or some combination of the two, because you've probably, if you're a client of ours that have tried to put things in here before, been frustrated with the fact that you have to put it all in by hand. We get it. That's why we made this. So get excited. It's worth getting excited over. So now that this is done, we would just come down here and click Update, and then Save. And when you're finished, you are greeted with this. Here is our quote page of Jason's portfolio. Awesome. So let's go ahead and scroll through this really quickly. Some basic portfolio level info. We have the return graph right up front here, which gives you a nice view of how this is performed over time against your chosen benchmark. We have some key statistics on allocations, basic risk metrics, total returns, some basic allocation measures, information on holdings, your typical modern portfolio theory risk measures, and then some periodic returns down below. I'll just go ahead and click through a couple tabs here. The holdings tab is going to allow you to do a little bit deeper analysis on the individual holdings in a portfolio. So unlike on the quote page where I just got the top 10, here I have all the holdings listed out. And you can see here target weight, current weight, whatever the current drift is, most recent percent change. And there's also a button to export holdings here. We'll get to that in a minute. That's going to be important later in the presentation. Now, if you'd like to do a deeper dive into allocations, the allocations tab is excellent for that. We can come in here and take a look at how much stock or bond is in the portfolio. Where is this portfolio exposed in different regions of the world. In this case, it's you know about a 90-10 emerging, uh, excuse me, a 90-10 developed to emerging markets mix. Have a look at different stock sectors you might be exposed to, or different bond maturities, different market caps of stocks, and different sectors of bonds, and stock styles and credit qualities. You know, all useful information in making portfolio level decisions, whether it's with a new client or a current client. Go ahead and scroll back up here. The data tab is more focused on singular data points. The vast majority of these are focused around risk and performance, though we do have some uh, other model portfolio specific measures as well. Finally, we'll move on to the performance tab here. I imagine most of you are pretty sharp. I don't need to explain what this is in too big a detail. It's performance. Wow, how did you know that? As you can see here, some returns against the benchmark, annualized and on a line graph. Now you'll notice I skipped over fundamental charting. That's because it's my favorite part and we're saving it for last. I'll jump into that now. See, one of the great things about a program like Y Charts, see what I did there, is you can pull in all sorts of different uh, portfolio measures into a chart and look at different portfolios against each other. So for example, you have Jason Smith's portfolio against the S&P 500. Now we've already established Jason isn't necessarily the most aggressive in terms of his outlook on risk tolerance. So the S&P 500 may not be the most appropriate benchmark. We can go in and pull in that moderate benchmark here. Give that a second to load. And you can see very clearly that if I just go ahead and get rid of that SPXTR, it tracks much more closely. And as with all charts on Y charts, you can enable presentation view, put your logo on it, add a title, put this in any article or blog post that you might be writing about.
And as a last piece on model portfolios, we also have this really nice generate report feature. This is awesome, you know, both from the perspective of having new business conversations in addition to current client conversations. I'll briefly just generate a report to demonstrate my, my point here. This two page with benchmark I see used a lot in new business or sales conversations, depending on how you look at it. I'll go ahead and generate that so you can see. So if I open this up here, you'll notice a couple things. Let me zoom in. So as you can see, we start off with uh, your firm's logo in the upper right hand corner. Some return information, basic stats, annualized returns, asset allocation, geographic and region exposure, and top 10 holdings. Now you'll notice all of these different sections of this PDF report are separated by these gray bars. That's because in, in between these gray bars here, these are what we call modules. And there are an awful lot more of these available than what you're seeing on this report. All four of the reports in this generate report button right here are fully customizable. You can have modules added, removed, reordered, a cover page put on, custom disclosures, your firm's logo, a color scheme, all those things are customizable. And if that's something you're interested in doing, you know, please feel free to get in touch with us here or reach out to your support rep. We'd be happy to help. All right, so to recap, we just went through the process of uploading a model portfolio via CSV. We went through the model and went through creating a report and putting the portfolio on a chart against an appropriate benchmark. This is gonna make you dangerous in new client presentations and that's exactly what we're looking to do. So now we're gonna move on to the other side of portfolio analysis and Y charts, and that's our Excel plugin. So a brief word on our Excel plugin. The Excel plugin is a one-way API that exists between our servers and Microsoft Excel. It's a Windows installation. You need Excel 2010 or newer. And once you've installed the plugin, what it'll allow you to do is access any data point on Y charts via our servers. Now for those of us with the inclination, like myself, you can spend all sorts of time doing custom analyses in Excel, but for the rest of us, well, we need more efficient ways of doing things because we have clients to talk to now, don't we? So for that reason, our Excel engineers have built out, you know, somewhere between 45 or 50 different templates you can use in our Excel plugin. We're gonna be focused on two of them today in the most popular section of the templates page on YCharts. The first one is this portfolio side-by-side -side comparison. This is an excellent tool for taking an incoming prospect's portfolio and comparing it to one of your firm's models or perhaps just what you're recommending to a new or current client. The other, down to a conversation I've had with many of my advisor clients recently is this correlations between portfolio and custom benchmark up here. You know, there's been a lot of discussion around making sure the assets in a portfolio aren't overly correlated as that inherently increases market risk in the event that a certain asset class does not perform as expected. Okay, without further ado, let's dive in. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the side-by-side -side here. We'll jump into the trailing returns input tab to start off. And this right here is where you're going to put the prospects portfolio. Now you can see we have some blue cells here. These are the editable cells and we're gonna paste in the tickers on the left and the weights on the right. You can also you know, put in the cash allocation here if that's relevant to you. Now you'll notice we have a drop down here for selecting different models. As we've already established, Jason's risk tolerance is definitely not one where I would recommend an aggressive portfolio to him. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I have for models in here. They're just input into all of these blue cells. We're gonna stick him in our moderate aggressive model. And you'll notice 
since we've selected that, I'll scroll down here, you can see there's a space to view the holdings of the moderate aggressive portfolio. And down below, a place to put your appropriate benchmark. In this case, I thought it makes sense to have a little bit of uh, international exposure, or emerging markets exposure. So we went with a 60-40 split, half American equity, half international equity. Now you're greeted with lots of data inside this template here. You know, we have tabs for calendared returns. We have tabs for asset allocation. We have tabs for fundamental and risk measures. But the real meat and potatoes of this Excel template is this side-by-side -side report tab right here. So let's go ahead and click into that. Go ahead and scroll up here. So right from the top, you notice that the intent of this portfolio uh, overview here is to compare Jason's incoming portfolio with what I recommend as his advisor. So you can see we have some allocation information, region exposure, a little bit further down, we get into the specifics of the regions. Top holdings. We also have information on equity exposures. The style boxes. We have our sector exposure here with the equity stats below. And then down at the bottom, we have our fixed income information. And then below all of that, risk and performance. Now the nice thing about this report is if I go over to the file menu here and go to print, this is already formatted to be printed out and used as a deliverable. You can click through this with a client, have a conversation with them about the portfolio, put your logo on it, again, change the color schemes as you see fit. All right, so now we've loaded Jason's portfolio into the side-by-side. -side. We've compared it to one of my firm's models. Conversation's going great so far. Now let's jump into the correlation analysis. Like I mentioned previously, I see an awful lot of my advisor clients talking right now about overly correlated assets in portfolios and how to avoid that. Well, that's exactly what this template was designed to do. As you can see, we have the same kind of input columns on this template that you would have on the other. Tickers on the left, weights on the right. And down below, the same benchmark as before. And you'll notice we have both correlations to this benchmark and the correlations to the other assets. So we can see how each asset is correlated with each other. Now how to read this is the closer to a positive one, the darker the color red, and the closer to a negative one, the darker the color green. You can very clearly see which assets are heavily correlated and those that are not. This is a great tool to use for your own exploration in looking at a potential client's portfolio to help them see things that you might recommend they do differently or potentially opportunities for you to add some value. All right, so we've gone ahead and now put Jason's portfolio in a model portfolio. We've shown it in the side-by-side -side, and now we've also taken it into the correlations template as well. All right, now before we move on, I would just like to point out there are two places you can find our templates on YCharts. The first one is on the actual website itself on the Excel page. You can find it under the tools menu and just click on Excel there. And the second is in Excel itself on the YCharts tab. You see that templates menu there. There will be a drop down with all of our templates listed in categories as it is on the website. So now that we have pulled Jason's portfolio into two Excel templates, we've made a model portfolio, 
Now it's time for me to show you a couple of the most common workflows I see in Y charts to help you find some synergies in our different tools. One of the nice things about the way uh, a model portfolio CSV is formatted, it is the perfect way to create a watch list out of the securities in it. Watch lists are a fantastic way to organize securities in Y charts. So what I'm going to do here, uh, if you'll follow along with me, I'm going to copy this list. Now let's go back to Y charts. And I'm going to make a new watch list out of these holdings. Let's go ahead and select fund watch list because these are all funds. I'll call this Jason Smith. And let's go ahead and paste this in here. And when I click add, all 17 funds added to the watch list, done. So now you have the same flexibility with this watch list as you would any watch list in Y charts. You have the data tab. You have alerts. And now we're going to come over to the options menu here and use view in to pull this into a tool called comp tables. Any of my clients on this webinar, you'll be smiling right now because of how hard I push this view in menu. So now that we're in comp tables, let's go ahead and pull in a metric set so we can do real quick fund analysis on all 17 of these funds. I have a metric set saved for this. Let's go ahead and open that up. So as you can see, I've done a pretty simple little three year look back here. Sometimes it's useful to see relative to each funds benchmark, how has it performed over the last three years? We'll use alpha for that get a measure of how risky it's been versus its benchmark in the market in general. We'll use beta for that. Also good to know how much you're paying for your returns. Useful to see the expense ratio on all of these. And then finally, why do we invest for returns, obviously? So we have a three-year total return column as well. And in comp tables, you can sort by any one of these columns and continue to add metrics and do whatever level of analysis you like. But one of the things I'd like to draw your attention to is this export button here in the upper right. If I click this, I have two options. Number one, download by CSV. This is useful because it is hard coded and can be manipulated any way you want. However, you also have this option for export to Excel add-in, which is also extremely useful because what you're downloading instead is a dynamic spreadsheet, one that will link to our servers via the Excel plugin. Let me show you. So this will go ahead and open up. I'll just click this enable editing button. As this loads, you'll notice the columns start to populate with data. Now the nice thing about a template like this is every time you open it with our Excel plugin installed, you're going to get fresh data. And at this point it becomes extremely easy to do any type of additional analysis, add other columns, make custom charts or heat maps, that type of thing. Another common workflow I see on the view in page of Y charts would be the ability to pull a watch list into a fundamental chart. I'll show you that right now. So let's go back to this options menu, click view in, go to fundamental chart. And there we have all 17 securities. And I can click back and forth with these arrows here. And I can also use my right and left arrow keys Useful to have something to compare it to, obviously. So let's go ahead and add in a benchmark. I'll pull in SPY. Get rid of price here. Total return price is good. We'll turn on normalized so we can see percent change. And now I'm just going to use these arrows to click through this list of securities. Mm -hmm. 
Very nice. It's going to save you a lot of time when you want to look at a list. Now, as a last point, there's one other workflow I see much underutilized in Y charts, and that's the ability to pull the constituents of a screen that you might run for stocks or funds into a comp table as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the fund screen and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'll just go ahead and load up a basic fund screen here. I have this uh, 50 to 70 low beta high return funds. And as you can see, it has 10 results. Great. Now what? Well, I'll show you. Let's go back to tools, go to comp tables. And under this list browser here, you can find lots of lists of securities to manipulate, including watch lists and you guessed it, saved screens. So under the saved fund screens, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our 50 to 70 low beta list. Click submit. And there you have it. Now the nice thing about doing it this way through a screen is this list is now dynamic. As results go into and out of your screen, this list is gonna to continue to update. So this comp table will continue to update with new ideas for you to mess with. And that's just gonna make you more creative and give you more ideas in terms of your investment process. All right, so let's recap here. Now we've gone through some workflows that we see commonly on Y charts. We've gone through some best practices. We've shown you a couple Excel templates. We've also gone through how to use a CSV file in our new template system to upload into Y charts and help you save time making those model portfolios. These are some very exciting features. Glad to have the chance to share them with you. If any of you would like to have access to these and try them out that don't already, happy to set you up with a trial like I mentioned earlier. And if there are any questions any of us on the support side here can answer for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Adam. Here we go. Thank you, Nate, for showing us how to use white charts and Excel to optimize portfolio management. Before we jump into the Q&A, I want to reiterate that a recording of this webinar will be made available in the support topics section of our site. In case you need to review anything we went over or to share with your colleagues. Now we're going to begin the Q&A. And Nate, I'm going to ask you a few questions regarding the demonstration. All right, first question. Are there any computer requirements for the Excel add-in? That's a great question, Adam. It's one we get all the time. I would say the really the important things are it needs to be a Windows environment and it needs to be a version of Excel that is at least 2010 or newer. Now, for our Mac users that are listening and viewing us today, um, don't despair. I personally have about 40 or 50 clients that use um, a, v, a VM solution like Parallels or VMware or Bootcamp to create a virtual Windows environment on their Mac machines. Service is exactly the same, uh, the data quality and the consistency is exactly the same, and they love it. So those are the important points. Awesome. Thank you, Nate. Our next question is, how many holdings can I import using the new CSV upload feature? Adam, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm sure we're going to get that one a lot. Uh, Importantly, it's the same criteria as our current model portfolio editor, which is 100 holdings per portfolio. And the only restrictions on the import is it has to be a CSV formatted, just tickers on the left, weights on the right, that's it. Everything else is the same. Okay, Nate, our final question is, my Excel add-in doesn't seem to work. What should I do? So for our Excel clients that may be having some issues, Always happy to help. There are a few ways you can get assistance on that. For a quick fix, our support team is your best bet. Reach out to us through the chat function on the site. Alternatively, you're also welcome to email your customer support manager as well, as they're more than qualified to help with any Excel issues. Thank you, Nate, for covering these questions. And thank you all for attending today's webinar. We always appreciate any feedback that you may have. If you have any questions regarding anything covered today, please feel free to reach out to your YHR's contact.